Hi everybody, I'm Zilla Blitz and welcome. Today we're going to take a look at Operation Red Gauntlet. Now this is the expansion for Blood and Fury World at War 85, which is the second volume in the World at War 85 series. Platoon combat, World War III, hypothetical 1985 situation where the Cold War has gone hot in Europe. Now this expansion adds five scenarios, four of which you need Blood and Fury to play. So don't get this without getting Blood and Fury. And then the fifth scenario is a much larger scenario for which you'll also need components from the original game and some of its expansions. But let's jump inside and take a look at what we've got. Let's get started. Uh, first up, before we start, just to be clear about what you need in order to be able to play this. So this is a, an, a, an expansion for Blood and Fury and for the World at War 85 system. It consists of five scenarios and you get this scenario booklet and nine maps, which have 18 sides. Like they are gonna have a snow side and a regular side, like most of the maps in the series here. And in order to play the first four scenarios in this one, you need volume two, which is the standalone World at War 85 module, Blood and Fury. So if you have this, you can play everything that's here, of course, and then you can play the first four scenarios in Operation Red Gauntlet. Um, in order to play the fifth scenario in here, which is a massive eight map scenario, you need uh, Red Gauntlet, Blood and Fury, and you also need Storming the Gap, the base game, World War was a volume one, and you need Storming the Gap expansion pack, which has the expansions that you'll need to be playing. So you need the whole system in order to, be play, in order to play that big, last, big eight map scenario. So with that in mind, let's walk through and take a look at what's inside, take a look at some of the scenarios, we'll take a look at the maps and what new things are in this expansion. So the expansion consists again of this booklet, the scenario booklet, and then a big stack of nine geomorphic maps. And we'll take a look at these as we go forward, but let's take a look at what's inside because we wanna kinda of take a look at some of the scenarios and we wanna take a little bit of a look at the maps. So this is again how these uh, larger maps go together. Now, all of the maps in the series are geomorphic, but there is a note here that there are a couple of sides of a couple of these maps, in particular here, to create this dense urban environment uh, where they only work together with this map. So they're not, they're, there's four sides, I think, in here that aren't perfectly geomorphic. So you wanna be aware, it's not a big deal, and it actually kinda of creates a really cool urban environment in here, but it's just something to be aware of as you go forward. But again, uh, this would expand to a great degree the amount of maps you've got available for making your own scenarios as well. Now there are uh, three new terrain types. We have uh, tunnel, tunnel hex sides in this one, which is part of the, the battles that go on in the campaign here in the, the scenarios here. Then we also have a dense city and we'll take a look at what these look like on the maps. And then lastly, we have light industrial. So up until now there's been kind of urban terrain, which has been town more than anything else. But now we have light industrial and then dense city to kind of change the nature of combat. Um, and then some of the other rules that are, these are basically kind of rules that have been brought in with Blood and Fury and kind of reiterated at this point here. And then we get into very quickly the scenarios. Now, um, we, the, a lot of this action sends, centers around the Vaser River, which is where that larger scenario is gonna be and the, the Soviets pushing to try, try to cross that river. Uh, most of the scenarios in this book are big. So this is scenario 17, which uses four maps from this expansion pack to create this net, this network here. And as we can see, if we look through just the pages that are involved with the thing, I think it's an 18 turn scenario too. There's a lot of units. So this starts to really get into some of the bigger scenarios. And I think that just seems to me to be a design emphasis here is that let's expand the gameplay into some larger confrontations. Another note here is that it also, there are solo, solo order of battle and all of the information you need in order to be able to use these for the solo system that's included in Blood and Fury too. So yeah, as we can see, scenario 17 is big. Scenario 18 as well is another four map scenario that uses four maps from the system here. So we've got these four maps. And again, an extensive scenario with a large uh, orders of battle, a lot of information on how to set up and what's gonna happen and things like that. So this is Red Lightning, Minden North. So another big scenario. And then 19 and 20 are smaller ones. So this is crack Cracking the Neeson Bridgehead, a two map scenario. And that's um, smaller, I think, than the other ones. Although it does, again, it goes in there pretty big. There's a lot of extended information in here. Then scenario 20, another two map scenario. And then we get to, at the end here, scenario 21, which is um, 
massive. And I think that was the map set up there before that we showed us in the beginning. But it's an eight mapper. And as you can see, the orders of battle go on and on and on with reinforcements coming in in turn five, turn six, turn seven. It's, it's absolutely huge. Turn nine, turn 10. So there you go. There is a lot of things there. And again, this one, that last scenario is the one that you need uh, all of the system modules for. Blood and Fury, Storming the Gap, and the Storming the Gap expansion in order to be played to play that one. But that's what you get. So five scenarios, and again, that larger one you need um, all three of the systems for. Let's take a quick look at some of the maps here, too. So uh, as before, this is map 53, and I will show a uh, zoom out. Well, actually, these look pretty good. Uh, this is one of the maps that if we look at this uh, hex side up here, we can see that there are one, two, three, five, six, seven roadways here. So this is not compatible with every map. This is one of the non-geomorphic sides that won't work with other scenarios, but it will work with the south side, I believe here, of map 52. So this is creating kind of some unique circumstances. Nope, it doesn't work with that one. It, let me get it, I'll get it sorted. So here we go. It works with the south side of 51. So we can see all of the roadways line up. So this would be a kind of um, a unique combination for these two maps. And what it does, as you can see, is it creates this sprawling urban environment. And here we have this cluster of uh, dense city here that's very different and new terrain that's brought into the system here. Also, if we take a look at map 51 up here, we can see a smattering right here of this light industrial terrain, which is a new terrain. And then over here, on the top left, we can see a tunnel. These white dotted lines indicate a tunnel. So adding some new terrain to the system as well. And again, this is a, you know, this, this is gonna be, an, I mean, talk about an urban battle. This is a massive city that you're fighting for in this one. This is really cool. So this looks like a lot of fun bringing some kind of different terrain and some unique situations here, unique map situations to the game. So, and as always, if we flip these over, we get the, other sides here, and these probably match up. Um, let's see if we can get these to match up correctly. The other sides here are the snow environments, so they will match up that way. So you can play it in a couple of different ways uh, with the regular foliage or a wintry landscape as well. And again, these are the two hex sides. There are two more unique hex sides like this that match up in this way. So that's really the only limitation from the geomorphic element that you're gonna hear, so you get here. So you could use these in a lot of different other design your own scenarios. It's just limited by these hex sides with this one. So let's take a quick look at a couple more. I'm gonna kind of toss them out here. Variety of landscapes and terrain as always. They are uh, standard to the system as well. So as would be expected, they're roughly 13 inches by 19 inches, 13 inches on the vertical, 19 inches across. Um, each hex is one inch and the counters in the system again are three quarters of an inch. So a rather kind of big landscape to work with in terms of uh, maneuvering units around. And stacking is uh, too high. This one looks kind of cool. Got woods over here. Again, some more dense city up in here too. And then light industrial at the edge of this map up here. And it shows up quite a bit. Those new terrain uh, elements are, are, are pretty evident in a lot of the maps as I've been looking them over here. So lots of things to expand. And again, I think one of the other benefits to this one, map eight here, the other benefits to this one would be for design your own scenarios too, because you know, you're know you adding nine maps that for the most part, except for those exceptional hex sides, uh, the exceptional map sides are geomorphic and can be used in a variety of ways. So with the battle generator and uh, a much, bunch more maps, again, that, that whole theme that what we're seeing, I think, with World at War 85 is that evolution of the system, going from storming the gap, the World at War 85 volume one, to its expansion kits, which allow you to kind of build off of that combat. And now the inclusion of Blood and Fury with volume, with the rule set 2.2, and then Operation Red Gauntlet, which adds uh, nine more maps to play with, that massive eight map campaign, a massive eight map scenario, two big four mappers and a two mapper as well. So there you go. Um, again, you know, with the nine maps and the booklet, there's no counters, there's no cards because it'll all be included in Blood and Fury and or Storming the Gap if you've got that. And so uh, all built for solo uh, capabilities as well. And there you go, Operation Red Gauntlet, the expansion for World at War 85. I'd be happy to answer any questions that I might. And um, uh, thanks for watching.